Welcome! In this tutorial, I'll formulate linear integer programming models involving binary or zero-one variables. Binary variables are employed when there is a yes or no situation, that is to indicate whether a selection is made or not. For example, suppose we have four different projects to consider. We can either select a project or not select it. So for the first project, we can define the decision variables as follows x1 equals 1 if project 1 is selected and 0 if not selected. We do the same for projects 2, 3 and 4 by defining x2, x3 and x4. Or we can simply write xi equals 1 if project i is selected and 0 if not selected, where i equals 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now suppose each project has a lifespan of 3 months, January to March with corresponding outlays or costs in thousands of dollars shown here. Suppose these are the funds available for selected projects each month, and these are the net returns in thousands of dollars from each project. In this case, our objective is to maximize return, which is 217x1 plus 125x2 plus 88x3 plus 109x4. Since project outlays are constrained by available funds, we write, for January, 58x1 plus 44x2 plus 26x3 plus 23x4 less than or equal to 120. We do the same for February and for March. And then complete the model by stating that the decision variables must be binary. Upon solving this model using software like Lindo or Excel Solver, we find that the optimal solution is x1 equals 1, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 1, and x4 equals 1, with a corresponding net return of 414. That is, to maximize net return, undertake projects 1, 3, and 4 only. Let's now model a fixed cost problem. Suppose a small company receives an order to supply 1,000 units of a product. The company has three machines that can be used to produce the product. Here are the variable costs per unit produced from each machine, here are the fixed costs, and here are the machine's capacities. Our objective is to minimize total costs. We are going to need two types of decision variables in this case. One set for the number of units produced from each machine, and because of the fixed costs, another to indicate whether a machine is being used or not. So for the units produced we write, xi equals number of units produced on machine i. That is, x1 represents the units produced in machine 1, x2 for machine 2, and x3 for machine 3. Now, because fixed costs indicate that the entire cost will be incurred if the corresponding machine is used to produce at all, we define another set of decision variables. For machine 1, we can write y1 equals 1 if machine 1 is used, 0 otherwise. That is, if x1 is greater than 0, y1 equals 1. Otherwise, y1 equals 0. For all three machines, we write y1 equals 1 if machine i is used, 0 otherwise. So for the objective function, which is to minimize total costs, we write minimize 2.39x1 plus 1.99x2 plus 2.99x3 plus 300y1 plus 250y2 plus 400y3. That is, we multiply variable costs by unit produced and multiply fixed costs by the corresponding 0, 1 variables. When y equals 1 here, for example, it means that machine 1 is used and the fixed cost of 300 will be incurred. And when y1 equals 0, machine 1 is not used, so the fixed cost of 300 will not be incurred. For the constraints, we have an order here to supply 1,000 units. So we write x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 1,000. Equality is used here because we have to meet the order or demand placed by the customer. Now for the capacities, normally we just write x1 less than or equal to 400, x2 less than or equal to 550, and x3 less than or equal to 600. Note that this x1 less than or equal to 400 constraint simply states that we can produce up to 400 units on machine 1. But if the machine is not used at all, this won't be possible. So whenever we have fixed costs associated with minimum requirements or maximum capacities, we usually multiply the capacity by the corresponding binary variable. 
So the correct format is x1 less than or equal to 400 y1. That is, when y1 equals 1, we can produce up to 400 on machine 1, and when y1 equals 0, 0 units should be produced. We do the same for machine 2 and machine 3. We can then move the variables to the left side of the constraints and state that the xi's should be non-negative and the yi's binary. On solving this model, we obtain x1 equals 0, x2 equals 550, x3 equals 450. And for the binary variables, y1 equals 0, y2 equals 1, and y3 equals 1, showing that only machines 2 and 3 should be used. And that completes this fixed cost problem. In the next video, I'll be showing how to formulate some relational constraints using binary variables, including multiple choice, mutually exclusive, co and conditional constraints. Thanks for watching.